So today we will see two aspects of uh, the uh, random processes. First, the, the measurements, and second, the randomness itself. For the measurements, we have two notions which are sister notions, that of the covariance and that of the linear erosions. Both are erosions, as we saw uh, in the general case of an erosion, but they are very simple. And uh, for the measurement, they are the most practical. <coughs> so we begin by the covariance. The covariogram, if I go to the next image and I come back after, the covariogram is the measurement of the covariance, which is the fact that you erode by two points. The structuring element is made of just two points, and you move the two points everywhere, and when the two points are in the set, then uh, you have one point of the order. So to say that is equivalent to say that you shift, instead of taking the two points and putting them in the set, you can as well shift the set by the same, uh, uh, the, the, in the same direction by the opposite vector, and then you have the intersection. So the intersection is the locus of the point, such as, for example, the extremity and the origin belong to the set, and then you mark the origin, you put the origin at the extremity of H. H is a vector, it may have a direction, uh, which is that one, or the horizontal one, so you measure the intersection between the set and the translate and the array first. <coughs> For example, in the present case, you obtain something like that. After a certain large shift, you have nothing, and before you have a certain uh, variation. So, more formally, you consider the eroded by B, when B is two points, and which is equivalent to take the intersection, the root is the intersection of all the translates. Here we have two translates only, uh, so you consider the point which <coughs> belongs to the intersection. Uh, the measurements associated is just the area or the volume in three dimensions of this intersection. And you see that at the beginning when h equals zero, you just get the measurement of x, because x translated is the same, so you get the measurement of x, and it's also easy to see that if you make vary h and take all the value, then you have twice uh, to integrate the measurement, so you have the square of the measurement. So that start from here, the measurement of x. Uh, the anisotropy is uh, when you take uh, various directions, you obtain something which can change in this direction or that direction, you will have something different. And what, what is the difference? The difference is the fact that when you shift in, for example, the horizontal direction, which gives the blue curve, uh, you have all this part of the set which is involved. When you shift in this direction, it is the entries in this direction which are taken into account. More precisely, the derivative of the origin equals the variation of the projection if you want, in this direction. Uh, the projection is the strict sense if it is from a convex set. If not, you may enter several times, for example here, there, uh, in the set. And you, you have this result. And one can prove uh, very easily that when you take the average of the slope, you obtain the perimeter of the set, so the up to some uh, up to some constant. So the behavior at the origin gives you the area of the set and the perimeter of the set. Now we randomize. Uh, we consider that we have uh, a set which is define, if you want, in a random way, or we can also uh, associate with each point a certain function, and then we take the product of the function instead of taking the intersection. The intersection is the fact that you have one at, uh, the set 
and one at another place. But instead of that, instead of taking the function which is one in the set and zero outside, you can take any function associated with the set, give some uh, greater value to the set, and then you take just the product. It's exactly the generalization. And then we speak of covariance. In particular, if the function extends, the set becomes very large, you cannot make <coughs> a sum. So you replace the sum by the average, and you take the average of the function f. We will see an example. First, the case of an infinite expansion, but with a binary uh, set again. When you have a large set, a sort of texture if you want, you, you can take for the covariance, instead of taking the integral of all the positions where x and x h belong to the set, you just take the probability. You move your structuring element everywhere, and you calculate the number of cases, the probability, when the two point falls in the yellow in the present case versus the total number of the pairs of points that you can put. So that gives the, what you call the covariance probability that a point belongs to the intersection. So you make the intersection and you measure. <coughs> So the, we find again the same things that were previously. At the origin, we have previously the volume of the area. Now we have the probability, which is the proportion area or the proportion of volume. And uh, we had previously the, uh, this probability, which was uh, the integral of the area or the volume. Now it is integral of the probability. To, to belong to a point. And uh, we had previously the perimeter. Now we have, when you take the average of the covariance at the origin, uh, the derivative of the covariance according to the direction. And uh, then we have the perimeter per unit area, or in a three dimension, the surface area per unit values. So we have exactly the same. We saw that the covariance gave you in two dimensions, the area and the slope at the origin, the perimeter, and the square of the covariance, the square of the area. So the three things are transposed in terms of probabilities. Uh, other features. When you take a covariance and you measure the covariance, here it is measured in terms of uh, <coughs> proportions, but uh, it could be uh, just for a one set uh, limited in extension, you may find periodicities. So here the periodicities are clear. It's the material itself which is periodic. And uh, here the minimum indicates that <coughs> when you start from a point and you go in the horizontal direction, you have a low probability to find a point which is of the same color. Whereas if you take a larger value, you have some probability which increase. So this distance, the, di the half the distance between the uh, two, two, two particles, two lamellae, uh, is uh, given by here, 15 in the unit, 15 micron probably, and here 30 corresponds to the distance in this direction between the center of the lamellae. And that is, uh, a counter example. If instead of uh, taking this image, you start from this image where you have small lines for joining all the particles, the covariance is practically the same. Because the number of cases where you put two points which fall in the yellow in this space and in this case is practically the same. What is different is the connectivity. Here you have particles which are isolated and separated. Here everything is connected. Which means that the covariance is totally unable to see the connectivity, but extremely able to see the periodicities. It's a very, very specific tool. Uh, another aspect of the covariance which is interesting, the clusters. When you have clusters, <coughs> you have, if you take two points, 
which move. Initially, they gave you the positive information when they belong to the same particle. That corresponds to the shape of one particle. After you have here some second covariance which corresponds to the fact that when you are in a cluster, after a certain time, if you started from one particle, you have some higher probability to find another one than to find another of another cluster. So that represents a cluster with a sort of pseudo-periodicity because you have a, an average distance between the particles, which is roughly the same for the various clusters. And after, you find that finally an asymptote because the packs, the clusters, are relatively independent. So you can perfectly take the slope of the origin, which gives you the perimeter, or on average the perimeter, and the slope of that, which gives you the perimeter of the clusters. So you see, through the covariance, you see things which are not connected, but which have a certain meaning. <coughs> the same at the limit. Now, if you have very small particles and large ones, the covariance, exactly as previously, indicate first the motion in the small particle, which is one or two pixels, and then the variation <coughs> through the large things. So you can perfectly uh, consider that you have the sum of two terms, one which is at the limit the noise, and the second which is the object. And that is very useful because if you want to characterize an object by the covariance, you are not disturbed by the noise. Uh, how to do now when you have three phases? You may have a, in a between the case where you have a binary set and the numerical function, you have cases where you have three, four, five uh, phases. For example, here, <coughs> it is uh, an iron, uh, an iron uh, oxide. You can threshold or you can select the three phase relatively easily. And you have here a certain background in uh, white, an oxide of uh, iron which is called hematite, hematite and uh, ferrite here in, uh, in gray. So you have uh, three possibilities. You can take white gray or white black or gray black. And you can take, of course, in the various directions. How to describe that and what are the information we can get? So that is exactly the same as previously. You take the probability that, uh, for <coughs> example, <coughs> one uh, one point is in the phase one, another in the phase zero, or one point in the phase i and the, the other in the phase j, and you calculate the covariance associated. So we find that. We find here the white hematite, the gray aphorite, and the, in the blue, for example, you have the covariance between this one and that one. And in, in red, you have the covariance <laughs> between hematite and pores. So here, that gives the relation the indicating the size. But I think the most interesting is the beginning here. Because the beginning indicates that at the initially, for two or three or four points, you have zero probability to have one point in the first and the second, uh, one point in the, for example, uh, the uh, hematite, the, the white, and one point, the other, in the black. What does it mean? It means that when you are in the white, you cannot go directly, you have no contact with the black. The white is always surrounded by a zone of gray, you see? So there is no contact for a certain number of pixels, uh, which indicates on average, the stripe 
between the white and the black. And that, that, is, a, that is a very strong result indeed, because in the reduction of this uh, material, that is the material which a uh, black furnace, in the material which appears here, the initial uh, iron ore was hematite. And the final is the gray. So you have, and, and the pores are the, the medium in which uh, circulates uh, the reductor uh, gas. So you see that the chemical reduction, which starts from the white and which arrives to the gray, is being done, if you want. Uh, some parts are already gray, others are not gray. There are such nuclei of uh, white which are remaining, but they are attacked everywhere, and the, the intensity of the chemical reaction, the gradient of the chemical reaction, is exactly that. And that is very difficult to see uh, immediately. It, it needs uh, to use to go to the covariance for understanding. Now, from set to function, So when you go from set to function, instead of taking one and one, or phase i and phase j, you, you take the function f of x on <coughs> plus place, the function f of x plus h, and you take the product. Or you take the different square difference, which is the same. <coughs> so <coughs> for example, that is an image of chromosomes, and you calculate the covariance, uh, you find that. Uh, we saw with the set that at the origin we had the perimeter. When you have a function, if the function is continuous, uh, the slope at the origin will be zero. If the function is not continuous, the function is like a set. If you want the threshold of the function, you find a set uh, which has always the same uh, uh, contour, then the function will be, the covariance will have a slope at the origin which is not zero. Uh, the fact that here you have a covariance which is derivable at the origin corresponds to the continuity of the function. And the same with the noise. When you have a noise, we find again what we had in the binary case. If I put some uh, white noise here, uh, I have the covariance <coughs> of the noise, which is the beginning from here to there, and then the covariance of the function itself. So we continue to see the structure of the function plus the noise, which is just at the beginning. Uh, an example, an example of uh, uh, two lines uh, which have been taken, it was a study uh, about uh, tobacco that we did some years ago. So when you take two, two radios of one normal lamp and the lamp of a smoker, uh, you see for the healthy lamp that it has some uh, variation. The variation is due to the bone, if you want, uh, to the, 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 the presence of coast. But in the case of the lamp, you have an additional structure, which is a lot of uh, small calcification, which are due to, to small uh, uh, irritation, which are due to, to the, the presence of uh, uh, the, the presence, in this case, it's silicate. This is not, uh, uh, it's a silicosis. There's a presence of nodal of silicosis. They have a certain size, and they have a certain amount. So here, you see the proportion <coughs> The size uh, is the beginning of the covariance, but here you see the structure, the, the nodules of silis have a certain size which appear clearly and which makes a difference between these two radiographs. Here you have a small structure, here not. And you can quantify uh, the effect of uh, the silis. So that is for the covariance. Now we take the other notion which is very close. Instead of having two points, we consider a segment. So we have a series of points uh, that translates according to a series of 
translation vector when the translation vector varies between 0 and h. So instead of 2, we have more. So this linear erosion may be defined first, let's say, without probability, and after we will add probability. If it is just like that, you have the erosion, and you measure the erosion. If I take the same example, this set, and I make a shift in this direction according to larger and larger uh, parameters for the translation. 20, 40, 60. We see that we obtain a certain curve. This curve is necessarily decreasing because it's always easier to put 5 centimeters than to put 7 centimeters in the sense or 10 centimeters is more difficult. So it can, it can reduce only. If we compare with the previous covariance of the same set in the same direction, we had that. Uh, the beginning is the same because the beginning indicates just the fact that you enter. So uh, the, there, there is no difference. The difference occurs as soon as you have, for example, one point here, the other there. In the case of covariance, they are counted for positively because it's a couple of points which belong, a pair of points which belong to the set, but the whole segment doesn't belong. So you have only the part where the whole segment is included in the set, which is taken into account. So the similarity <coughs> is essentially <coughs> the beginning of the origin. The, the perimeter, uh, this notion is not involved at the moment. And the difference, the main difference, is the fact that we measure size. The volumetry means size. And also we will see that we can measure uh, some uh, rough tech parameters. Oh. Can you turn off the light? Better? Yes. Can you turn off the light? Yeah. Thank you. So a few properties. Uh, when you shift by a series of segments, you consider now the, the erosion and the beginning of this erosion. So imagine that you have this set and you shift by a certain size of uh, translates, which is this one, and you obtain the, resu the resulting uh, set. So now if you consider the derivative of the origin, you have the variation between 0 and epsilon, which gives you this projection, and the variation at level h, after a certain translation of size h, between h and h plus epsilon, which gives you this projection. <coughs> so at the origin, you have the diametral variation, the thickness, if you want, whose average will give you the, the perimeter. After a certain size, you can on only reduce, so you will be always smaller than the covariance, and uh, you will have a function which tends towards zero at infinity. So, if I continue with this drawing, that indicates the number of cords which are longer than h, if you want, if you consider this the derivative at value h. <coughs> it is necessarily the chord which are the, the, the shifted uh, h. It indicates the length h or the chord h which are totally included in the set and which have a length equal or larger than h. So it gives that, 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 all these chords. So that indicates the proportion if you divide by the total number of chords, the proportion of chords which are a, long, a length bigger than h. And that is exactly a size distribution, the proportion of chords larger than h. So it indicates, if you want, a size for relative to the, uh, to the length of the segment. Uh, we could also make an opening. 
It could also, because that is an erosion, if you want, when you take this board, all, all this zone indicates the erosion. Suppose now yeah, you make an opening. Starting from this erosion, you re-highlight. Then you get the eroded part, of course, plus the dilates, which give all that. So the erosion has the same projection if you want to have the opening, but the opening has this area in red, which is in addition. <coughs> Formally speaking, here you have the measure of the erosion, and here you have H, which multiply the derivative, which gives you this sort of a parallelogram, irregular parallelogram, and that results in the <coughs> measurement of the opening, the dark red plus red. But indeed, as soon as you know just the, the function P of H, the function of the linear eroded, then you can calculate the opening. So in this case, opening and erosion are equivalent. Just need to know the measurement of the various erosion for calculating the opening. So, uh, there are two means for characterizing a, a size distribution, always. Uh, you can count proportionally to the point, or you can count proportionally to the particles. Uh, I mean the following. If you have, uh, you know, it is in English, but uh, the story of the guy, a pie is in a wet and uh, <coughs> c'est un, un boucher which indicates uh, that you have an excellent pile 50% of lard, 50% of horse un pâté d'alouette, il y a 50% d'alouette, 50% de, de, de cheval et la cliente dit ouf euh, je trouve qu'il sent quand même beaucoup le cheval euh, vous êtes sûr et il dit mais oui, mais oui, pas de problème hein, pour un cheval, je mets une alouette. C'est exactement... Il y a deux manières de compter. You can count in number, one horse for one, one, one lard, or you can count in weight, the weight of the horse and the weight of the lard. And it gives two results which are totally different. <coughs> and you have always that. Uh, uh, sometimes, it's, uh, for example, when you measure all, all, all the analysis of the blood. When you measure, you, you go to, to, to some measurement for, uh, after, after a disease to calculate uh, what they call the blood formula. The proportion of the various type of uh, white cell in the blood is always in number, never in weight. Mm? And uh, where, when you calculate, for example, a sieve uh, in granulometry au sens du tamisage, uh, then it's the weight, you weigh the things. When you calculate the price, when you calculate the price of a car for the producer of a car, it has a price of the various components. But this price is defined in number of the radio clock uh, in the car has a, a, a cost which is higher, if you want, in weight uh, than the, the, the cost, I don't know, of a wheel. So you have to always two, two means, uh, they are totally different. So now, what we do when we sample, because everything is sample, when you start from a section, the section is the sampling of the space. And in the section itself, very often, there are samples. When, when you take an aerial photograph, it is a sample by a stripe of uh, the zone of the earth that you look at. So sampling by a grid, and you take all the particles which hit the, uh, <coughs> the vertices of the grid, that is exactly a weight in volume. Because if a particle is large, this particle will be hit three times, and you take the same measurement for the particle three times, so it is exactly proportional to the surface and to the area. But it is, if it is a section of a three-dimensional space, the, the fact that you have a particle is also proportional to the thickness of the particle. 
So the cost distribution uh, has to be interpreted in terms of volume or in terms of area weighted by the area. And uh, the function we have here is not weighted in area because each chord counts for one. Right? You count the number, the number of the chord which have a length higher <coughs> than H. So, if you count in number, then the average, the, the average is the average value of uh, the distribution function, and when you sum at that, remember, it was the core, the, distribu the, the distribution function of the core is the ratio of the core longer than h over the whole number of chords. So it's a prime of h divided by the prime of zero. <coughs> you integrate that. And you can also integrate, for finding another moment, you integrate in the same way. Now, if you want to speak in terms of measure, weight each chord with respect to itself, <coughs> then you have to take not h, but h, uh, not f of h, the previous one, but f of h multiply each chord is multiplied by its own length. And then you have the side distribution in, uh, in area or according to the length. And the moments that you obtain uh, derive very easily from the, the previous moments of the, the, the chord distribution in length. So finally, the only piece of information you need is to know the P of H and to know the linear erosion. That's, that is a difference. If you want, these two caps have two differences. Here, the first has not the moustache, and the second, it has a moustache, and it is uh, relatively bigger because it ate a mouse, uh, it is larger than that one. So now, calculate the chord distribution in number and in length. If you calculate the chord distribution of these caps in number and in length, you see that at the beginning they are extremely different, in, that is in number. So this one is a blue and this one corresponds, the yellow corresponds to that one. So you have uh, the beginning, which is very different uh, because you have the moustache sharp taken here and not there. And the difference of the big size doesn't appear very well because it is counted in number. When you count according to the weight, when you take the second function j, I go back, this second function j weighs each chord is weighted by its own length, so you weight more the large classes, then the beginning, the moustache, that are the two drawings corresponding to that. The moustache is practically ex not existent, so there is a shift in the figure. But the figure is made of only one peak uh, uh, for the, uh, the blue. So then you see that it becomes bigger in one case than in the other. The largest class is larger here than there, and it is very sensitive. Now, that was for one, one shape. If you consider a stationary version, uh, we have... Uh, I dropped that because it is uh, uh, not uh, very interesting. So, if you, if you have a large shape, uh, we, we will study what happens for the beginning of uh, the structure. So here, we will compare for handwriting. Uh, for that, we will consider <coughs> the beginning, uh, the, for example, here. It's not uh, linear, it, it has an inside, it's uh, relatively big, relatively large. So we take the beginning of uh, the covariance, or the beginning of the linear erosion, in the various direction. And uh, one can prove that the beginning of 
the linear erosion uh, in uh, the various directions when, when we have read according to the direction is the following. It is proportional to the, the chord itself, uh, that's the length of the perimeter, and that gives you the, radi the integral of the radius of curvature when they are positive. Now, if you do the same with the, the beginning of the, not the one, but the zeros, uh, you have something similar. And when you take the sum of the two, which is the two probabilities of the one probability to be in one phase or probability to be in the other phase, then you have the following result, which is interesting. The beginning of the core distribution, the derivative, not the integral, but uh, the distribution function, the density function is proportional to the vector itself multiplied by the, ex the mathematical expectation of the curvature the, or the radius of curvature taken in the square. The curvature is the inverse of the radius of curvature. So the radius of the square radius of curvature is equivalent to the square curvature. So when you got that, here you have the length h, and here you have the function which is at 1, f of h. So you must have at the beginning something linear in h, and the coefficient of linearity is proportional to the curvature. So if you compare the four, for example, uh, if you take these two, Slavonic and Aramean, Slavonic is the old Russian, and <coughs> Aramean is that one. It's one of the Arabic, uh, former Arabic uh, uh, handwriting. So you see the differences. Here you have a lot of curved curvature which are big, which are uh, relatively small, and here the curvature are extremely large. the radius of curvature. So, uh, and now the same, uh, when you compare the Tamul, the Tamulic with the, uh, <coughs> the Arabic, the Tamulic uh, has a certain slope, which is between these two. Mm -hmm. And the Arabic does not fit the model, because normally you should have uh, something which is proportional to the curvature and proportional to the uh, distance. So here you have something which reduce uh, starting from a certain origin. And that is due to the, the sum of very small elements which have only one pixel of uh, thickness and for which the model of speaking of a curvature is not possible. You can speak of curvature when you, when you have effectively curvatures here, there, there, all that is round. So it's, you can speak of curvature. Here you have wrong part, but you have also a big amount of very small things, so it cannot be or there are two, you have to sum up if you want two, two phenomena, and if you consider just uh, the regular part, the regular part is hidden by the, all the small parts. But here you can perfectly classify the degree of regularity, the degree of uh, uh, roundness, if you want, of its handwriting. And if we continue and present that in two or three dimensions, I show the next example. This example is made of a street, which is it's, it's a test, which is made here at the Ecole des Ponts, where uh, they simulate trucks. We go on streets, and the, the, they have a big manège, and the truck turn for 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 turn and progressively degradate the bitume and the road. And they test the various type of bitume, the various type of uh, uh, technology they can use for uh, protecting the road. <coughs> and that is what they have measured. So they take uh, one, uh, one measurement, I think it was made uh, along the road, uh, you, you have a crown and you take a small variation and the 
evaluation along the plan. <coughs> that was the initial state, and that is the final state after 10,000 passage of six ton trucks with a certain speed. So they want to know uh, the reduction of the regularity. And that is a 1D curve, but they would like to, to interpret that in terms of 3D structure. Oh. <coughs> How to do that? We had previously a function, remember, in two dimensions, which was the beginning of uh, the size distribution, the beginning of the density function, was proportional to h itself and to the square curvature. In three dimension, uh, you have exactly the same. The f of h is proportional to h, and instead of having the curvature, you have two types of curvature in three dimensions. You have one curvature which is called the main curvature, the average curvature, and that which is called the total curvature. Because you have two radii of curvature at one place, so you take the product of the two radii or the sum of the inverse. So the total curvature is the inverse of the product, and the average curvature is the sum or the average of the two uh, local curvatures. And that gives you the, the curvature of the surface. So we are in this case, because we have a certain function which is defined over the space, and it has the two curvatures. So then, uh, what we find is that. So again, we have some function, a difference of the two curvatures, which is involved. So we can perfectly uh, measure. So it is less regular than in the case of the handwriting, where all the points are aligned, but here it's a... Uh, it's more experimental, but we see nevertheless it's easy to test to, to fit a straight line and we have an increment which is proportional to h, which is normal, and the variation of slope indicates the uh, regularity of uh, the model, which means in the present case the roughness of the street which has been uh, and destroyed by the, the track uh, passage. Thank you. It will be for the moment uh, the last the last slide. Bon. <coughs>